On today's show, Tesla Q1 earnings, Nissan starts to make its answer to the Powerwall, and why the boring company isn't. These stories and more coming up next. This is Ecotricity's brand new Ecotech Roundup show, brought to you by New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. 100% Kiwi and 49% community owned, we're serious about clean, green, renewable energy. Have you switched? Head to ecotricity.co.nz to join today. Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, a professional musician turned electric vehicle crusader, and I'm here to bring Kiwis our weekly roundup of the biggest news stories around the world in relation to cleaner, greener transport. As always, thanks for joining us. We start today's show with Tesla's all-important Q1 financials, which were released on Wednesday after trading closed in New York. Despite making and selling a record number of cars, the California company found its Q1 losses widening to $1.33 loss per share, caused in part by its recent acquisition of SolarCity and Grumman Engineering, not to mention costs associated with continued gigafactory development, Model 3 pre-production preparation, and work on that Tesla Semi. Talking of which, Tesla confirmed this week that it will be holding a special reveal event exclusively for winners of its Tesla referral program on June 2nd and June 3rd. At the same time, Elon Musk shared the first teaser image of the Tesla Semi this week, which he says will be powered by many, many Tesla Model 3 motors. The other thing of note from the Q1 earning call is the news that Tesla plans to double the number of supercharger stations in the world this year to 10,000 stalls and double the number of destination chargers to 15,000 stations, all of course in the interests of getting ready for Model 3. Tesla may not have said more about its plans for an electric pickup, but this week we did get the launch of a new range extended pickup from a company called Workhorse called the W15. The boxy pickup boasts twin 172 kilowatt electric motors to give all-wheel drive, powered by a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack made of the same 18650 cells found in many a Tesla. When the battery pack, which it says is good for just under 130 k's of range, is depleted, it turns on its three-cylinder gasoline engine to further extend the range. Pricing has yet to be announced, but Workhorse says the W15 also provides off-grid power for tools and can tow 2.2 tons with a GVR of just under 3.5 tons. That's far more than the Via Motors truck that former GM CEO Bob Lutz has been supporting for years, so if this beast can make it to market at the right price, it might stand a chance. At least in the fleet market. The question is this, will it come to New Zealand? I hope so, because this big ute would be pretty awesome for those wanting off-grid power away from the beaten track. Last week, I shared with you BMW's plans to try and use Tesla to scare its employees into working hard on electric vehicle technology. This week, I'm bringing you the news that BMW is pushing hard along that goal to zero emission technology, increasing the number of factories where its battery electric vehicles will be made, while simultaneously striving to design a cheap, renewable way to produce hydrogen fuel. Of its electric cars, this week saw BMW committing to building its all-electric Mini and future all-electric BMW XV at the same Leipzig factory where the BMW i3 is made, while a production version of the BMW Vision Next will be made at another one of its major facilities. As to hydrogen, well, unlike some of its competitors, BMW is still exploring hydrogen as a possibility, developing its own in-house electrolysis system so it can provide true zero-carbon refueling options for its future customers. That home fueling system is something that Nissan is also expanding into, but rather than hydrogen fuel cell tech, it's been busy launching its own answer to Tesla's Powerwall, a Nissan-branded home battery system that uses the same lithium-ion battery cells found in the Nissan LEAF and ENV200 electric vehicles. The batteries, which entered into production at Nissan Sunderland plant in the UK this week, will be offered to customers as of July this year and will start at 5,000 British pounds, that's about 9,400 Kiwi dollars, for a unit made of recycled leaf batteries complete with five-year warranty. Those wanting new batteries will pay more, but they'll get the benefit of a 10-year warranty instead. Developed in conjunction with US firm Eaton, the hope is that leaf customers will buy a Nissan battery pack to go with their Nissan electric car. But with new Leafs not available to Kiwi customers, I'm doubtful we'll see it here either, unless it's in the form of imported, second-hand ones from Japan. Luckily, there are some alternatives, and the folks at Ecotricity NZ are more than happy to help you find them.
When Tesla acquired German-based Grumman Engineering last year, it said it would honor the equipment manufacturing facility's existing contracts with other automotive companies, including Bosch, BMW, and Volkswagen. But in recent weeks, it's gone back on that promise, canceling all of its non-Tesla work in preparation for increased Model 3 workload. Now it seems both BMW and Volkswagen are fighting back against Tesla advanced automation, telling at least one German language publication that they're not warned about the change of policy quickly enough. Tesla, meanwhile, has fought back, saying that it's been in contact with every client for weeks and it's working with each client individually to resolve the issue. Will it lead to court proceedings? <laughs> it's too early to say, but here's hoping a solution is found that makes all parties happy. Staying with Tesla a little longer, we heard news this week that one of its research partners, a spin-off from the Dalhousie University in Nova Scotia, Canada, has developed a new nickel-manganese cobalt oxide lithium-ion battery chemistry, which could not only increase the lithium-ion battery cell's longevity, but also reduce the wear that cells are subjected to when operating at high voltages. I don't have time to go into the details here, but I'm going to try and do a video on it next week when I've had time to digest more of the specifics. On this show, I'm often talking about future self-driving vehicles, but those vehicles are usually some form of car or personal transport. But this week, electric bus manufacturer Proterra announced that it's begun its own autonomous vehicle project, working in collaboration with the University of Nevada, Reno, and its Living Lab Coalition partners. The idea? To bring autonomous vehicle operation to the world of public transport. A challenge which not only includes dealing with other traffic on the road, but also the specificities of the usual unpredictability of bus operation, including customers requesting to get on and off the bus at weird times, negotiating bus stops, and of course, safely dipping in and out of the flow of traffic. Given Proterra's buses are all electric, it should be easy to integrate autonomous vehicle tech into its existing vehicles, but it's going to be some time until we see this technology become commercially available. I've already dealt with a lot of Elon Musk this week, sorry, but this next story tackles The Boring Company, a firm that Musk started last year in order to develop a new autonomous underground transit system that could zip you and your car across major cities without worrying about massive traffic jams. We've not heard so much about it so far, but this week, during a TED interview, Musk showcased the first video of what it might be like to travel by one of those tunnels that The Boring Company hopes to build across major cities around the world. Drive onto a little autonomous vehicle transporter onto the surface, descend into the tunnel while still in your car, and then zip along at high speeds to your destination. I won't go into the details here because I've already made a video on this channel explaining how it works. So when you've done watching this one, follow the link at the end of this week's video to find the in-depth analysis of this particular story. What I can go into, however, is how you can save between two and $3,000 a year by switching to an electric vehicle. And if you're interested in finding out how much you can save, the folks at Ecotricity NZ can help you figure it out in about 35 seconds by clicking on the link above. It's really easy too. Just enter the mileage you travel each year into your current car, the type of fuel you use, and how much you're paying at the pump. In addition to telling you how much you've saved, including service costs, it even tells you how much carbon dioxide you managed to save to keep this beautiful nation beautiful for many years to come. And while I'm about it, Ecotricity also hosts New Zealand's leading EV buyer's guide. With cars like the Nissan LEAF available used from $12,000, it's getting so much more affordable than ever before to own an EV. So make sure you check that out too using this link above. And make sure you let us know how you get on with both in the comments below. And finally, 100 years ago, Mitsubishi, then known as the Mitsubishi Shipbuilding Company, made its first ever vehicle, the Model A. Fitted with a four-cylinder, 2.8-litre engine driving the rear wheels, a total of 22 vehicles were built during its production. But to celebrate the company's 100th anniversary, Mitsubishi is working with West Coast Customs in Los Angeles, USA, to build a Model A replica based on the Outlander plug-in hybrid. Yeah, it's a little weird but it's certainly an interesting way to celebrate the past and future of one company in one vehicle. And on that note, it's time for me to say goodbye for the week. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, be sure to send it our way. In the meantime, enjoy your weekend, make sure you do something fun, and don't forget to help keep those wind turbines spinning by switching to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company.
Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, hug a tree. <laughs> Bye.